Here's the first example. A perfect spring whose constant is 1500 newtons per meter is attached to a one kilogram mass that slides on a frictionless surface as shown. The object is moved 20 centimeters from its rest position and released. Determine A, the speed of the mass as it passes through the equilibrium position, B, the maximum acceleration of the mass, and C, the position of the mass when its speed is four meters per second. Let's begin by noting a few things. The first thing is they tell us what the spring constant is. Let's write that down. And we know what the mass is. The mass is one kilogram. We also know something about the amplitude because the system is displaced 0.2 meters away from the equilibrium position. The maximum displacement away from equilibrium is 0.2 meters. That is the amplitude. So as the system oscillates, it's going to oscillate 0.2 meters to the right of the equilibrium position and it's going to go as far as 0.2 meters to the left of the equilibrium position. Now with that in mind, we need to figure out some things about what's going on when I have the object at equilibrium and at the amplitude. First of all, I'm realizing this is a perfect spring on a frictionless surface so I can say that energy, the total energy of the system, is conserved. In this case, the only game in town is kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. So the sum of those two things are going to be constant throughout. Now the energy is going to slosh back and forth between elastic potential energy and kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. And at points between the amplitude and the equilibrium position, there are going to be combinations of both. Is there a place where I could calculate what the total energy is? And the answer to that question is yes. Based on this information, since I know what the amplitude is, and since I know that the kinetic energy at the amplitude is zero, because the object comes to a stop just briefly for an instant, I can calculate what the total energy is. Recognizing that point is going to be the key to solving this problem. So let's figure out an expression for what that total energy is and then see if we can use that to help us solve the rest of the problem. Remember the total energy is kinetic plus potential, but at the amplitude the speed is equal to zero and the displacement is equal to the amplitude. So I can write down that the total energy is one half times Ka squared. I could get a number for that if I wanted to because I know what K is and I know, and I know what A is. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it in this expression. Now, what do we ask for? In part A, we're trying to find the speed of the mass as it passes through equilibrium. Well, what do I know about its speed? At that point, the speed is going to be a maximum, and there's going to be zero displacement. In other words, x is zero at that point. So all of the energy is kinetic at the equilibrium position. I'm going to use that to figure out what the maximum speed is, the speed of the mass as it passes through equilibrium. At the equilibrium position, the displacement of the spring is zero. So there's no elastic potential energy and all the energy is kinetic. How much energy is there? Well, there's one half times Ka squared. But that's equal to the kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Let me set those things equal to each other. Now let me substitute what the total energy is and substitute for the speed. Now I'm going to solve that equation for the speed. So now I put in the numbers and I find that the object travels just under 7.8 meters per second when it passes through the equilibrium position. That's part A. In part B we're trying to find the maximum acceleration and the maximum acceleration is going to occur at the amplitude. So if I were going to draw a free body diagram of the object at the amplitude, here's what I would see. The only one of those forces that causes acceleration is the spring force. The normal force is perpendicular to the motion, so is the weight, so they don't contribute anything to the acceleration that's horizontal. And now to figure out what that acceleration is, I put what the spring force is, which is K times the displacement at that point, which is the amplitude. So Newton's second law says that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. The net force in this case is the spring force. The spring force is equal to K times A at the amplitude. And now I know all those numbers. Let me put them in. And now I'll feed them into my calculator. And what I find is that the maximum acceleration in magnitude is 300 meters per second squared. That's roughly 30 G's. That is a huge acceleration. 
but that's what the number is. Now the last part, we're asked to find the position of the object when the speed is four meters per second. How am I gonna do that? Well, let me recognize that I'm looking for the position, which is X. And let me also recognize that it's gonna happen on the positive side of the equilibrium position and on the negative side. So there are gonna be two places where that speed is four meters per second. Per second. So now, the total energy is going to be divided between kinetic and potential energy. I can figure how much of the energy is kinetic because I know what the mass is and what the speed is. So I can calculate one half mv squared. What I'm looking for now is the position. So I'm going to apply conservation of energy to help me. The total energy is the kinetic plus the potential. And now I'm going to put in what I know about each of those. I know that all of the energy is elastic potential when it's at the amplitude. And so the total energy is one half Ka squared. Now, I claim I know every one of these numbers in this equation except for x. So solve that equation for x. If you'll permit me, I'm going to do several steps of algebra in one. First of all, I'm going to get rid of the one halves because they're a common factor. I'm going to move the kinetic energy term, the mv squared term, over to one side, divide both sides by k, and then take the square root. So all of that's going to happen in one single step. And now I'm going to feed in the numbers, and now put those numbers into my calculator, and I find that the position where the object is moving at four meters per second is going to be at 17 centimeters away from the equilibrium position. That's going to be both on the positive side and on the negative side. That's the first example. Here's the second one. A spring whose constant is 2,000 newtons per meter has one end attached to a wall and the other end is attached to a three kilogram mass. The mass rests on a level frictionless surface. The mass is pulled away from the wall, adding 450 joules of energy to the spring. Upon release, the mass oscillates back and forth. Determine A, the amplitude of the vibration, and B, the speed of the mass when it is 10 centimeters from the equilibrium position. So I have a spring, and I have a mass that's attached to it, and when there is no compression or elongation of the spring, I have some resting position that's indicated, it's shown there. I know some of these numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and write down what some of those numbers are. So now what happens? I pull the spring away from equilibrium. Maybe I pull it to the right, or maybe I push it to the left. But whatever I do, I add 450 joules worth of energy to the system. All of that energy is elastic potential. There is no kinetic energy at that point. So the total energy in the system is 450 joules. Now I let it go. I'm trying to figure out now what's the amplitude, A, and what is the speed, V, when the position is 0.1 meter from equilibrium. So those are the things I'm looking for. So I'm going to apply the principle of conservation of energy. And I'm going to recognize that all of the energy is elastic potential at the amplitude. So there's my statement of conservation of energy. The total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the elastic potential energy. And now I'm going to put in what the kinetic energy and the elastic potential energy are at any point in time. Now, at the equilibrium position, all of the energy is kinetic. At the amplitude, all of the energy is potential. I'm trying to find now what the amplitude is, so I'm going to use the fact that the total energy is 450 joules at the amplitude, where the speed is equal to zero. And now I know numbers for these things. The total energy is 450 joules. The spring constant's a number I know. I can solve that equation for the amplitude. And now I feed the numbers in, and now I put them into my calculator. And I find that the amplitude is just under, just over 67 centimeters, 0.671 meters. Now, what about part B? I want to figure out what the speed of the mass is when x is 0.1 meters. Again, I'll start with the conservation of energy principle, and I'm going to solve that equation for V, because now I know all the numbers except V in that equation. So if you'll permit me, I will solve this in one step, and now I will substitute the numbers, and now I'll feed those numbers into my calculator. And I find that when the object is displaced 10 centimeters away from equilibrium, it's traveling at a speed of 17 meters per second. That would be both in the positive direction and in the negative direction. What that means is when the object is on the positive side of the equilibrium position, 
it could be moving to the right or to the left at 17 meters per second. And likewise, if it's on the negative side of the equilibrium position, it could be moving to the right or to the left with 17 meters per second. Last example, example 38.3. A 20 kilogram mass is attached, as shown, to a spring whose spring constant is 2,000 newtons per meter. The mass is displaced one meter from equilibrium and released. The mass slides on a frictionless surface. What is the period and the frequency of the oscillation? Now for this problem, you've got to know the formulas. And the formula for the period and the frequency are reciprocals of each other. So let's remind ourselves of what those formulas are. So in this problem, I just need to substitute in the numbers. I could either find the period and then take its reciprocal to find the frequency, or I could just take the numbers that I'm given and I substitute them into the correct formula. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Let's start with the period. And now I put the numbers in my calculator, and I get that the period is 0.628 seconds. In other words, the time for one complete oscillation is just over six-tenths of one second. What about the frequency? Well, I'm going to do it by taking the reciprocal of the period, or you could put the numbers into the formula. And now, I'm going to take the reciprocal of the period, and I find that I get 1.59 hertz, 1.59 cycles per second. So what have we done in this lesson? What we've done is we've been introduced to simple harmonic motion. We have seen that conservation of energy can help us find out things about the system. We see that in a perfect spring system, I have partly kinetic and partly elastic potential energy if I have a horizontally oscillating spring. And there are certain strategic points at which the kinetic energy, the potential energy, the velocity, the acceleration, and the force are either maxima or minimum values. And I can use that information to help me solve some problems about the motion of the system. We've solved some numerical examples. We've seen what the period and the frequency formulas are, and those are going to be ones that we see from time to time in other such problems. So for this lesson, that's it.